script and winner list hey making moves dropping knowledge every single day videos hit on the case subscribe but strong bitcoin level bullish vibes we can't go wrong bullish vibes we can't go wrong analyze your trust with precision he's got the vision spy trends predict the games we can write decision top pound in the bullish corner he's the king educate the mass bring it back crypto play chat pow tom crown on the scene what up what up what up what up Thursday, we're live, live on the treadmill. Let's go. Starting up all the streams, firing them up, getting them on. We're here. We've been live every day this week. What a change. Not a bad one. Picked a weird week. Anyway, let's get into it. There is the spookiest of spooky thumbnails today. Bitcoin 420. 2024. What does it mean? Well, it's actually just a palindrome of the date. However, looking up at the Bitcoin halving chart, it is also the date of the halving. So spookiness and spice inbound. I think so. Bitcoin has sold off. People were a little panicked yesterday. Hopefully I helped talk you guys back onto some ledges. Remember the lesson from yesterday, never make a decision when you're panicked or emotional that goes for moves to the upside and moves to the downside. It's not just one way. Hopefully some of you took a breath, took that advice, took a walk, whatever it is, got disconnected from the charts, came back and uh, maybe had a little more rationale. That's really all I can offer you guys. That's the value. I hope I can offer you all the time. We have seen a bounce Bitcoin recovering from the lows. We are not out of trouble yet, though we're close. Maybe not that close, but uh, not yet. I have two takes I want to share with you guys. You've probably heard of this if you've been around the last few years, Wickoff, or basically every time I hear it, I hear, uh, you know what I mean? It's a Wickoff party on Twitter and on YouTube again, and the bears and the bulls are having it out. I want to take a look at both of these schematics, the bearish and the bullish setup, and I want to give a little bit of insight or at least just share these views from uh, the authors who have published them. So we're going to do that. We're going to take a look at the chart. We're going to see where we might get out of trouble. We're not there yet, but things are looking much better than yesterday. Uh, before we jump into that, there'll just be a few seconds here. Something I wanted to point out. We haven't used this tool in a while, but maybe it's time to bring it back. Our funding rate for Bitcoin across the board, if you can see this chart, uh, Binance, negative 003, that's very light bullish funding. Technically, it's negative funding, but that's considered bullish. On other exchanges, we're seeing kind of a spread of this. But what gets me excited over here in the token margin side, we are seeing people short Bitcoin to the point where funding is kicking in. Shorts have to pay longs. We have not seen this sustained on Bitcoin in a while. In fact, we've seen the opposite what is considered bearish funding or very high positive funding. You can see this up here on this table. These are the highest funding rates. I don't know what GF is or ANT. Recognize CVC and KNC and DGB, but those are bearish funding over here. Low funding rates. These are bullish. Typically, markets look to sweep this liquidity, and I would say especially where we are in the chart. If you remember yesterday, we spent a lot of time basically just repeating. Price has moved down. People are scared, but nothing has changed on the chart. We have not broken March's low. Uh, during the live stream, I said, I think intraday the low is in. That doesn't guarantee we don't go lower in the next few days, but it was in. We did not breach down to March's low. So the structure remains intact for now. Holding this level could just be a higher low on our way back up to the highs. However, there are bearish scenarios that I think we need to go over. And we're going to balance that out with a bullish one. And I think the Wyckoff, I don't even know how to say it. Every time I read it, I think of the same thing. Uh, schematics will give us a little bit of insight into that. So what I need from you today, guys, no matter what platform you are on, whether it be on the YouTube mainstream where you can see my hands, hand vision, or the vertical stream over on TikTok on the YouTube mobile version, wherever you are, I need you to smash those like buttons, subscribe, follow, tap the screen, whatever it is, get a little engagement going. This is four days of streaming in a row. I haven't done this in a while. It's been a bit. Uh, yeah. So help me out. Engage. Let's get this pumping. I think there's a lot of people who are going to need to see 
what we're going to talk about today. So I uh, really quick want to do a tiny little bit of analysis. Let's bring back this chart from yesterday's stream. We kind of, uh, we reestablished this channel. I thought that that was actually really a solid move as we dipped into these levels. Price action kind of changed its vibe there as it moved into the channel. And that's actually playing out really well. Uh, this channel was established, or at least we were following it back in October, Q4 of last year, and it played out really well. And looking back, man, you can't, you couldn't even fit it better than that. That's wild. Just looking at the highs from late 23, early 24, you can see that almost all of this bull run has been contained in some form by this channel. And you can almost use your imagination and stretch that channel out maybe one more degree, and that would encompass the lows here and the highs here. So this channel has definitely some basis to respect it, or at least follow it, look at it, keep it in your analysis. Um, and here we are. Uh, yesterday, intro low was in. We bounced from the middle of the channel. So here's what's on my mind before we get into the schematics, but this won't be long. Right here, top of the channel. We are seeing some nice stuff today. I'll say over the last 12 hours, we had a bullish engulf on the 12 hour, and that is led into this potential bullish engulf on the daily. That would be a great way to start a recovery or at least look for a retracement. But here's my warning, where we're at right now, at the previous day open at the bullish engulfing line this is not an easy level in fact this it's probably a really tempting level to long but i think that might be dangerous i would feel more comfortable honestly back above this channel it's about 66,000. i'll be feeling better uh you can see on the day order block order block bearish engulf now we have a retracement there's going to be resistance here in the form of these order blocks um so going long here is a little eh, out of my out of my style. I would rather wait, honestly, for like 66K to close. On the other side, I think there is an argument for a short that may be taken into pieces. Now, right now at the bullish engulf from yesterday's open, that's 63.8 might be a decent place to build a position if you're feeling bearish, if you think that the halving 420, 2024, is going to be a bearish event. Personally, I like that we've sold off pre-having because I feel as if we if we had not done that, if we had pumped into the having, that we would see the sell off post having and I think this is going to change that up. So I think we're going to have brighter skies after 420. Um but that short uh potential starting to build a position here at the daily engulf and then looking to add at the top of this channel. This is not financial advice, guys. This is just how I'm looking at the chart, which is what I share with you every day here. Please don't just blindly follow what I say, lose money and wonder why. I am human, or so they say, uh, and I am wrong. And I'll be wrong again in the future, but I think I'm pretty good. Anyway, that is my kind of, I'll say, into Friday, into the weekend projection. I think we do see a rally at least back to 66K. Fingers crossed that it breaks. Maybe these schematics will give us a little bit more insight. So what do you guys want to start with, bullish or bearish? I think we might start with bearish, unless you guys want to see the bullish one. What do we need more right now? That's the question. What's up, Birdman, King Andrew, I Fly Hill? How you guys doing over there? Over on the mobile stream. What's up, Red Man? tank top today. I'm on the treadmill. You, know, you got to keep it classy. I had a hoodie on, but I got too warm. What's up over on TikTok? Who's over there? Say hello. Angel, Intuitive, Benji, Dalton, Connor, Cam, Manuel, Ty, Kai, Taurus, Jerry, Che. Good to see you guys. Engage. All right. Bullish, bearish, bearish, bullish, bear pig, man, bear pig. I don't have the man, bear pig version. All right. We'll start. We'll start with bearish. Why are we portrait badger? Because you're on the mobile stream. If you go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tom Crown, you can come over to the mainstream. Uh, you should also join the Discord, discord.gg slash Tom Crown AR. All right. Uh, this is going to be behind me, so let's go back to the other scene. There we are. How well can you see this? I'm not sure. So this is a Wyckoff distribution schematic that we have had for a very long time, but this has been proposed by one of the analysts that I do very much respect, and that would be Crypto Jack. He, he's over there on Twitch. On Twitter, you can follow him. Great analyst, underrated. Um, he's not a perma bear. He's just a guy, honestly, like us, just looks at charts. And so when he says something, I do tend to listen, especially when it becomes the talk of the town now. I know he has been looking for this since the breakdown, and it has been playing out. 
um, pretty closely. So I think that deserves at least, at least a look. So this is the schematic he is looking at. It's a little busy and maybe if this is the first time seeing it, you're going to have trouble grasping what's going on here. Ignore all the, the letters and, and phases and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can use those to kind of anchor that to the chart to point out similarities of structure and markets to tie it to this schematic, but they're not important. What this is, is a common way that markets engineer liquidity before a dump. Basically, it is a high, this is marked by BC, a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low. That lower low paints the bottom of the range that then moves to a higher high, paints the top of the range. And what we see is like a a failed flat top, I'll call it, that breaks down, moves to the bottom range, lower highs, lower lows, and then inevitably or eventually continues to the downside. So I don't love how close this looks to what we're seeing on Bitcoin. I don't like that. We still have the bullish side, so don't, don't, get, uh, don't get all crazy yet because the bullish side also fits well. And that's a great lesson for markets in general. These patterns tend to paint in a way where the resolution or maybe the confirmation of the patterns is unknowable until the move. So sometimes they're not useful at all, but they are good schematics. That's a good word. Good blueprints to understanding market behavior and structure. So this is what CryptoJack shows us. This is the Bitcoin chart and you can see it is accurate. Right down here would be that range low into our range high. Kind of a failed flat top triangle breakdown. He's got some validity here. He also has marked the having right here on the chart. Um, there's some validity to this. I think this is worth looking at and examining. You have your range highs and your range lows. This is actually one of the cleaner versions of the schematic. Now, everybody was crazy about wick off. They were wick offing this, wick offing that, wick offing their friends like crazy in the last cycle. And now it's coming back. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, here's his notes. He says distribution implications. So this could be an accumulation or a distribution structure. He's arguing this is distribution, which is the bearish form, which is makers are getting rid of their supply, looking for cash to dump and rebuy lower potentially. Uh, the targets for him, and I might disagree with him here, but I don't think he's out of the wheelhouse. If we are in this schematic, in this Wyckoff distribution, and it plays out, these targets are actually not that far away from what we discussed as the worst case scenario yesterday. Uh, he points to 50,000, potentially 36,000. And if you think about it or go back to yesterday, that's basically what we were looking at. Kind of a lower 50 range. And then I actually had said, I believe it was like 31. That was the untested monthly resistance. We have not seen tested as support down below us. And I said, we have a lot of room to the downside. Even if we do move to 30, which I don't believe is going to happen. We're still very much in a bullish structure on the macro. Um, he says that the uptrend momentum is done and complete. And this is the one that rings with me. This is not the most bullish. We had incredibly bullish price action since the start of 23. Now we did hit higher highs. We haven't broken our structure low and that's where I'm going to disagree with him. However, we can see there's one, potentially two tests by the bulls to push to a higher high that were failed. They did not move above the range high and they then started painting lower highs and lower lows and gave us a little downtrend. But remember this price action, because when we flip to the, to the bullish version of the schematic, you're going to see that it actually lines up pretty well too. Um, other notes, new accumulation period required for further upside. Fair enough. That could, again, this 50K target, come on down to that previous support, see some accumulation and move back up. Um, rallies are for selling in this scenario, if this schematic is correct, and that would be true. And invalidation occurs above 71K. I guess it's, uh, what, the BC? The BC? I don't know. Where do you get 71? Oh, he's calling that the LPSY. Okay, 71. That's his invalidation. I would argue invalidation is above 47K. New higher high. That shows momentum is back. Uh, not very helpful for trading in general, but it might give you an idea if you are looking to hedge or open a short that you might use the all-time high or even just above 71K as a stop. I think that's legitimate. What do you guys think? Anybody out there, any comments? I noticed uh, some things that don't fit perfectly, but I didn't say them. I'm kind of saving that for you guys if you can catch them out. You don't think this is wick off. It's a stretch at best. Lars, do you, can you guys, does anyone out there, can you point out where the inconsistency might be? 
Can you point it out? I know where it is. I have one. I have one thing I can kind of nitpick at, but my nitpicking is going to be kind of uh, meh as these things are never going to be identical. We look for things that are similar, not for things that are identical. There's basically no such thing as identical price action. You made it too small to read? No, I can't. I can't. Here, I'll, I'll bring it up on the big screen. See if that helps. Does that help at all? I don't know if that helps. It's behind me now. There it is. Wish I would have known that before. On the vertical stream, you guys are going to struggle. I'm not going to lie. You're going to struggle. Um, maybe I'll just do this. There it is. Now you should be able to see it for the most part. Maybe I pull up this schematic by itself. Oh my god. Yes. Fusion skin. Whatever. I butchered that spelling typing it in. Here we go. I'll pull it up. It'll be easier to see on this, hopefully. Notoriously bad at kind of pulling stuff up while we're live. There we go. Is this too small to read? So there it is. Is this what we're seeing? Do you think this is what we're seeing? Oh, this is the wrong schematic. See, like I said, I'm notoriously bad at pulling stuff up while I'm live. Schematic number two. There's like four of them, I think. Now, here's a terrible version of it. God dang. Well, this is the best we're going to do today. It's actually a different one. Well, here you go. In this very brief study of trying to find the right picture, we can see that there is some disagreement on what the schematics are. Nope, this is again number one. I thought this was number two. Are those the same? They are the same. Number two. All right. Well, if I can't find the clean, and I just immediately did, so we're good. I was going to say I'll just move on. There it is. This is it. A little easier to see. Make sure you can see it over there on the, uh, on the vertical. There it is. I hate you, Windows. I hate you with all my soul. Is this what we're seeing? I can pull up the Bitcoin chart behind, too. Is it? We're going to go to the bull case in just a second. Here it is. Are these, is this what's going on? Let me put this on my own chart. Then. Is that it? What do you think? Okay. Got the example. L, P, S, Y, bunch is different. Yee? Let me see. I would say L, P, S, Y is not that different. Not that different. I see a difference though. Unless we want to argue that right here, unless we want to argue this 69K is the BC, which I don't believe is what it is. Might be, but I don't believe it. It doesn't line up perfectly. Our BC potentially throwing this off because you have to have the BC before the range high, as we can see here, UT phase. Then you don't break that high and you fall. It's kind of like an upside down creek. That's what I see as potentially a hole in the plot, but I acknowledge that isn't, that doesn't defeat the idea. The concept is decent. It's still decent, still good. All right, so let's do the bull side. This one also going to be hard to see now that I uh, think about it. This one by Rainbow Runner on Twitter. Both of these guys are great analysts. I love them both. They disagree. That's okay. Uh, how do I make this big enough for you guys? Maybe I could just do this. I'll make the big screen. I'll full screen it for a second, and I'll just get rid of myself. I know you'll miss this mug. Don't worry. There it is. All right, here we are. We're looking at this. This is the potential bullish argument here a little bit messier a little bit messier i'm gonna see if i can find the good schematic oh my god fuck you there you go that was easier reaccumulation all right so basically a similar schematic much smaller text hopefully you guys can see this and this is the bullish argument so what it really would be arguing and i guess it's in contrast, uh, is the position of the highs, the position of the lows, and then most importantly is the creek and jump across the creek. That's what they, they call it, a creek. And basically a creek has some very slow downward price action characterized by lower highs and lower lows. If I pull up the current Bitcoin chart, get rid of everything. Right here, this could be creekish. 
lower highs, lower lows. It's very coiled, very tight price action. And this is the critical part, in my opinion, of this schematic. Maybe I should have had these guys come on to explain it today. Probably could have. After the creek, which does not invalidate the range lows, we get support and then the jump across the creek. That's where we see the pump. So looking out, we did not invalidate the lows. I would argue, uh, I would argue, uh, yeah. Looking at the schematic, we could call the high, the BCLX, God, I hate these things, into ST. That could be the similar or corresponding highs that we saw on the distribution schematic where we have BC into UT phase, high, higher, high. The highs is basically in the middle of the range. That's when we then no longer see that upward momentum that gets sold off. There we go. Very similar. And Rainbow Runner is basically saying that we are at support. We haven't broken our AR or our low, our lowest point in the range. So we're going to be looking for support and then a jump across the creek. I think both of these are completely valid. At this point, there is, in my opinion, no one side of it that I think is better. Of course, I want it to break to the upside. I want this to be accumulation. I want to see Bitcoin continue up on this bull run. I want to see it melt faces into the halving, just like all of you guys do, probably. Um, but we don't know. Here we are. I think they're both fair takes. The kind of walk away is, well, Wyckoff is a little confusing. How can it be both an accumulation and a distribution schematic? I think that a break of 59.2 is going to put the favor into the distribution or into the bearish side. It's going to put the favor a little bit in their corner. If we see price move up, and this is what's kind of interesting, Jack had cited an invalidation of 71K. If we reach 71K from here, that is likely that jump across the creek. Well, I've seen price creak down, bleed down, and then break through that downtrend. I'm going to lean in the t I'm going to lean to the side of Rainbow Runner of course right now because the low hasn't broken. Jack does have some other arguments. You can check him out on Twitter. He loves posting about this stuff. Um, he has some other arguments that involve volume, which is uh, important to I mean all charts, but important to the schematic specifically. And I believe it's the location of the volume. If the volume is at the lows or at the highs. Let me see. No, I lost it. That's okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look for more crap while I'm live. I already did too much of that. I think they're both worth looking into. Check them out. They're gonna be able to explain it better than I am. I'm just going through. I think they're both valid. I like them both. I think they're worth sharing. So right on. Right on. Let's see. Let's see what's going on with the corn. Let's see. I'm gonna play that chirp house song again. I wanna hear it. No, wrong one. No, no, chaos. Oh wow. Apparently, I played both songs at once. I'm going to mute the, the audio for a second. That was wild. I need to label my buttons better. Uh, real quick, Dominance. What's Dominance doing? What are you doing over here? Dominance, no change, it seems, from yesterday's stream. Basically, back to the previous weekly open. Dominance still looks strong as hell. Looks super strong. That eight-year trend line broken in clean fashion, respected, moved higher. We're seeing a healthy retracement. Um, I expect Dominance to continue climbing into the end of the week and probably into the end of April. I think that's realistic. That doesn't, does not look good for alts unless we get that jump. We get a break of 40 or 74K. If that happens and Dominance continues climbing, alts may have a little bit of reprieve. But if distribution plays out and Bitcoin falls lower with Dominance climbing, alts are going to take another beating. Here we go. The song's finally finished playing. I gotta make sure it's the right one. There it is. Chirp pow. Getting sweaty already. What's up, Barry? How you doing, bro? Thanks for subscribing. What else should we look at? What else is important today, fam? Bitcoin having imminent 
for 20, 20, 24, imminent, the palindrome of a lifetime coming in on the day of the having. Can you tap your head with one hand circle? Um, I mean, yeah, man, I can do that. Will I do that for you? No. You gotta earn it. <sighs> What's good? What's good, Philly Skills, John Smith? See Roll Rollid? Rollad? Roll Rollad. Let's see who's here actually. Crypto Joe Del Galdillo. Sin. 4chan token. Baron Corey. Dave Cobb. Dave P. Greg Zilla. What's up, bro? Good to see you, Greg Zilla. How are you feeling? Hendrick. Jay Constant. Jason Casper, the man, is here in the live. This man about to give, well, he's not giving birth. Uh, I don't know. Uh, about to have a new human in his life. So happy for him. Send him good energy. Send him love. Uh, Jerrion Broma. I don't even know how to say that. What's up, bro? Joe Potter, John Smith, Japernicus, Christostov. Lars, line in my pocket, Matthew Schmid, Moggy, Mighty Mighty, Obe, Philly Skills, Ren, VJ. How you doing, dude? Redman's here. Slayer Hater. Uh, I think, is Slayer Hater talking about a video in his getting YouTube channel? Ban him. He's a scam. Actually, that might even be a good little lesson to do. Be a decent lesson. Stay calm, Tesla man. Pickle is back. By the way, thank you for sending your prayers and your good energy to Pickle. I think it helped him recover. He's back on the scene, just like Tom Crown. Up and run, Vlad's here. Vlad, I gotta check out that song, my bad, dude. And Yellow Yup Candles got a lot of fam over here on the YouTube. A lot of fam. How's the uh, TikTok going? Sheba, make price go up. There's always the best comments on, on the TikTok. The best comments. They're, most of them are gibberish, but I love them. There you go. Andrew P. found you. Been here with you for years at YouTube. Right on, dude. Good to see you over there. Have fun, Dalton. Bitcoin down to 57k, then up to 160k. Don't scare me. Doge 420. Blaze it. Do I know the future? Ibrahim Namik? Not at all, dude. I don't have no I don't have a crystal ball. It broke. It used to. Knee Gevs. Don't DM people. Any random DMs, guys, you get on any platform, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, Twitter. It's always a scam. 100% of the time it's a scam. 100%. Random DM, it's a scam. Uh, let me take a look at this week. Your high says bye, Paul. Not yet, dude. Not yet. Better believe on 420, 2024. 20, uh, we're all going to be high, hopefully in price. Weekly money flow continues to roll over. VWAP on market cipher B falling down here. RSI on the weekly. Interesting. RSI on the weekly really close to mid January is low. Price obviously hanging out much higher. RSI has not hit a lower low yet, so we do not have our hidden bullish divergence yet. But it does look like it's heading that way, doesn't it? It looks like it's moving on down. It won't take, in my opinion, that much of a deeper move. Even maybe just a tap of 58.8. We don't need bullish divergence on our lows, but it would be a great signal. Great little sign. Potentially just trading sideways here for long enough would do it as well. Oh yeah, I got something I want to show you. Shout out to Lux Algo, our sponsor, by the way, the number one indicator company in the universe. Hundreds of free indicators. Check them out. Use my link, tomcrown.io slash luxalgo for a risk-free one-month trial. Just try it out. I noticed this randomly last night. Check this out. So this is our TA from yesterday, and I was like, hey, I'm checking with Lux Algo signals and overlays. What's going on? So I threw it on. Look at this. This is cool as shit. This is so cool. Um... You have to make it a little cleaner for you. Colors are getting mixed, at least for me. There we go. Look at this. Look at look at this reaction. Wait, how did that move? This moved. No. That's not good. I'll pull up the screenshot. I might have accidentally moved this channel. Basically, signals and overlays really lined up unknowingly with our analysis. Very cool stuff. Oh, it's because it's on the volume channels. Okay, so this is the original that I took a screenshot of yesterday after the live. This is what we ended up with on the live stream. Now, I pulled up signals and overlays. Check this out. This is awesome. Signals and overlays, nailing it here. Let's look back to the ETF sell-off. When we fell out of the channel, look what happened. Trend changed from bullish at the top of the channel to purple, indecision or changing trend. And as soon as it broke the bottom, it turned red. When it popped back into the channel, oh, that's too zoomed. 
when it popped back into the channel right here look at this trend changing again as it touched the channel green immediately when it's back in moving up check this out this is wild called the top in a way it called it called the the high i guess the local high trend change at like this is like seventy thousand. purple purple a little bit of a uh, chop there back into the trend turns purple closed above the trend turns green and then we have four days of red candles accurate as hell that's wild i did i was blown away when i saw that blown away I thought I saw a, an up candle here, though. I already gave birth, bro. Jason Casper already gave birth. Dude, what can't this guy do? Dude is jacked. Great trader. Huge, successful YouTube channel. Awesome guy in general. And he gave birth. The first male human birth since Arnold Schwarzenegger. Give him a round of applause, guys. If you are not subscribed to Jason Casper, you should be. And you guys know, I do not say this. I don't say this about people. Mostly because, I don't know, most, most content creators suck and don't know anything about what they're talking about. Jason Casper, not in that group. Let me pull up his page for you. There you are. Wait. You gonna bring me to the page? There it is. There he is, this guy. He's got blue eyes like me, maybe even more blue. That's the only reason I hate him. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Awesome dude. Got the check mark on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Jason Casper. I'm going to throw it in each one of those. Casper does rock, man. The list of people I love in this space starts with Jason Casper. Let's see. Casper, Cryptoface, Frankie Candles, obviously. Uh, Lifer, who else is awesome out there? We got a lot of Mitch Ray. If you are a YouTube or, a, no, if you're a crypto creator, trading creator, and you don't shill projects for money, you've earned my respect. That's it. If you don't use your audience as liquidity, You've earned my respect. If you can trade on top of that, man, you're, you're hitting home runs. Killing it. Killing it. Uh, from earlier in the stream, we said potentially layering in a short. I'm not taking this trade, but right where we were, 63.8, potentially if you are bearish, to look to maybe scale into a short. And that does seem to have played out since the start of the stream. Not a huge change, but at least we had red candles moving down. Um, I remain bullish, honestly. I remain bullish as long as March's low is chilling. Low time frames look actually decent for once. Money flow on the hour did hit a lower low, which is not ideal. However, we see that rolling over here. It did happen, I think, at least once each day in the last few days. We had a little rollover. The difference here, the difference that I see. One, we have a little trigger wave to start it off. Always good. Momentum hitting higher lows as money flow rolled over. VWAP hit higher high. Momentum hit a higher high. That was not the case back here. Lower highs. VWAP did, but lower highs in our momentum, kind of double, triple bottomy momentum. You can see that this is potentially starting a low time frame reversal. Doesn't mean we're going to a million K tomorrow, but it does suggest that that retracement may be back to the top of the channel, roughly 66. I don't know why this channel looks different now. I must have moved it. Or maybe it's the volume candles. I didn't even think of that. Volume candles, I'm really starting to like them, guys. I'm going to do a, we're going to do a video on them. Like a, to include in our number one in the world YouTube free trading course. Check it out after the live. I love them. They're awesome. You do need premium on TradingView to get them. I thought they were awful when I first looked at them. They're starting to grow on me for sure. But they do, you need to be aware. They do distort trends they're gonna distort trend lines trend lines are basically hinging on the fact that every data point to the right is equally spaced when the candles become fatter there is more distance between the data points by the way we have a trend video coming out how to trade trends um the distance has changed made longer or shorter and that's going to change the degree of the trend lines which will Inevitably mess them all up. I don't know if they're still valid. This is a brand new tool from TradingView. They just published it. I've never seen it in my life until last week. I'm digging it. I'm not sure if the trend lines will be valid. It certainly seems valid when we throw them up on this channel. This channel fits better with them, which I actually found out during this live stream. It's better. Put it on a regular. It's not quite as clean. Still pretty good. 
I wonder if it's actually only distorting the candles that are visible. I don't know. I don't even know how you would check if the historical candles distancing would be different without looking at them. Hmm. I'll have to ask trading view. They'll tell me. Daily VWAP did hit a lower low. Momentum down here slightly higher than late January. This is not the best look. Money flow high is coming down. However, pointing to that retracement, which I think many people are probably looking for today now that their fear has passed over. VWAP reaching that zero line, momentum slowing down. Hmm. This kind of looks to me like it wants to do this. Another lower high, maybe over the course of like two, three weeks. Another lower high on money flow. Like that. I think that looks about right. Short term. Yesterday I said there's really no reason to be short term bullish in that moment. I think there is today. I think that there is today. Either way, if you didn't panic sell yesterday, especially Bitcoin, if you didn't panic sell your Bitcoin while we were live, remember we were live at the bottom. You're live right here. 60.1, we saw a break. If you were here on that live and you were it panicked, you were thinking about selling. If you didn't sell, if you took the advice of never make those decisions in the moment, never panic buy or panic sell anything, wait, do something else, come back. If you did that and it saved your butt, even a little bit, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five, guys. It is easy to beat yourself up in trading. Trading is brutal, especially uh, as you're learning in your process. Trading is one of the most brutal things there is. It's very easy to beat yourself up all the time. Even if you win a trade, I bet you guys have done that. You've won a trade and then closed it and said, I closed this too early and you felt like now you're losing because you could have held on to it. It's easy to beat yourself up. You need to take any opportunity you can to positively reinforce good decisions. If you did that, pat yourself on the back. You did well. Even, even if you want to sell now, that's okay. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. But even if you did it now, you're 6% up. That's good. That's much better than down here at the Pico bottom. Well done, fam. I said at the beginning of the stream, if I can offer anything on this channel, I hope it's just a calm voice in the chaos. A little bit of rationality when things get crazy. We can be your safe haven. So you should join us at Discord, GG slash Tom Crown over on YouTube.com slash Tom Crizown. Man, four streams in a low. In a row. You panic bought the bottom with leverage. I was going to salute you, but with leverage, uh, all right. All right. Still good. If it was spot, I'd be happier. I'd be more proud of you. Need an airline for an edit. I don't even know what that is. Appreciate you for that, man. Very soothing voice. Thank you, Japernicus. Oh, yeah. Getting it on in. I get the mic a little closer here. Get it real smooth. Real smooth. All right. We're going to be live again tomorrow, obviously. It's Friday. Uh, it's Friday and wait. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like technically, at least in America and freedom land, one day, seven hours. This is going to change, guys. This is not ever a guaranteed time. Miners can all of a sudden decide to stop mining at the last block or all of a sudden start to just turn on every rig they have, speed up the having. But at this point, let's see. This looks like 8 p.m. East, 8.30 East. So technically we will be live tomorrow, but we're gonna be live on the having. We, maybe we're gonna do a marathon stream, just really drive home this week of streaming. <sighs> I chose a strange week to, to stream every day. Probably should have done that in March when it was popping, but, but I don't know. That's just how I am. That's what I do. That's what I do. What do you guys think, up or down? Up or down short term, I think we move up again. I think we go to the top of our channel there. Man, that volume, it does. It does change it, I don't like that. Right up here, 65, 65.7, maybe as high as 66. Basically retest the 15th high. I got two alerts set there. For me, I think if, if 66, 67 is retaken, I think that we move back to the top of the range. I don't know. It doesn't look great still, but whether you think this is accumulation or distribution, something's going to happen soon. And we have the biggest catalyst Bitcoin has ever seen in play on top of the other biggest catalyst Bitcoin has ever seen. That is the halving and the ETFs. 
we got a lot going on. It would not it, it would not surprise me to have an incredibly volatile day tomorrow and into the weekend. And I hope that you take some of this calmness with you, some of this rationality, guys. Trading is done in the past. I'll let that sit for a second. Trading is done in the past. Because every trade should have a plan, should have a thesis, meaning it should have reasoning, it should have evidence. It should have an entry, a stop, a take profit. The trades execute in the future, but they're planned in the past. So plan, make your plan. If you're feeling really bearish a day before the halving, that's okay. I, uh, that makes sense, I guess. I don't know. But make a plan for it, whether that's deleveraging or uh, removing exposure, whatever it is. If you're feeling panicked, it's because you are over leveraged or overexposed. Change that. Change it. Or else you're just going to keep feeling these feelings and they're inevitably going to drive you to make a bad decision. You can do it, fam. Get some exercise. Get on the treadmill. Go enjoy the warm weather. I will see you tomorrow. Not at the normal time, but probably at the halving. If it slows down and goes into like Saturday, we'll stream at the normal time. But that's it, guys. Join us on Discord. Discord.gg slash Tom Crow. Make sure you're subscribed, liked. You don't want to miss this content. It's the best on YouTube. Check out our free trading course. There's no paywalls here. Check it out. Great videos. We're building. We're adding more videos every month. And you guys have been appreciating them, getting some value out of them. 